Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton, and this is a top grade top up for higher tier. This lesson, electrolysis half equations. This topic was requested by Chloe Moller and Tommy J. Thanks guys. If there's a topic you're having trouble with which you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. I want to let you into a little secret when it comes to balancing an electrolysis half equation like this. Most people will look at something like this and immediately move on to the next question. If you're able to balance something like this, if you're able to complete that equation, then you are getting some extra marks and those extra marks are easier than you might think. If you can already balance standard chemical equations, and if you can't, then you should check this video just here. But if you can already balance standard chemical equations, then an electrolysis half equation is actually a lot easier. You should be able to get your head around this without too much difficulty. It may look unusual at first, but with a little tiny bit of practice, they become very, very easy indeed. So if it's so easy, how do we balance this equation? Well, let's have a quick look at what it's showing us. You can see that we've got chlorine ions here and they are turning into a chlorine molecule here. This is chlorine gas, Cl2. So the first thing which we need to do is look at this and go, well, we've got a different number of particles here. We don't have the same number of chlorines on each side because we've got two of them here, but we've only got one of them here. So your very first job is to check that you've got the same number of particles on both sides. The only way that we can resolve the fact that we've got a different number of chlorines on each side is by sticking a big two in front of this one just there. So now we've got a pair of chlorines on each side. The chlorines are balanced. That's half the job already done. Pretty easy, right? Let's do the final part of the job and you'll see that this next bit is also pretty easy. Because all we've got to do now is make sure that our charges balance out. You can see that we've got a minus charge here, a negative charge, because the chlorine is a negatively charged ion. That means it has an extra electron. If that was a two minus, then it'd have two extra electrons. If it was a three minus, then it'd have three extra electrons. If it was a positive symbol, then actually it'd be lacking electrons. But let's focus on the negatives for the moment. So our chlorine atom here has become an ion because it's got one extra electron. We haven't accounted for that over here though. And we've got one more thing to think about, which is that we've actually got two of these chlorine ions now. So two chlorine ions, each of which has one extra electron. So we've got two extra electrons, which we need to add to this. So let's add that. Put a plus there. And then it's an E for an electron with a minus. So now we're showing that electrons from here have ended up here, but we just need to add one more thing and that is a two there as well. So our two extra electrons, there's one for our first chlorine ion and one for the second chlorine ion, they've both ended up here. This is now a balanced, completed ionic half equation. All this equation represents is that when the chlorine ions in an electrolysis cell reach the anode, those extra electrons which they're carrying are taken away back into the power supply. So those extra electrons are separated out. That's all that the equation is showing us. They tend to present these kinds of equations in the exam as a game of fill in the blanks. So look at what you've got in your formula when they give it to you. If you've got extra electrons and uncharged atoms over here, then over this side, you're going to have some negatively charged ions because those electrons are going to be combining with your uncharged atoms and giving them negative charge. Alternatively, if you've got negatively charged ions over here, then that's going to be separated out into your uncharged atoms and you're going to get some electrons out of it as well. Don't forget that on the back of your periodic table in the exam, you get a list of all the different ions. So you can look up and see whether chlorine has a positive or negative charge or whether any of the other ones have a positive or negative charge. They're all right there. So if you've got something like chlorine and you want to know what you end up with over here, just find chlorine on here and it will tell you what sort of ion you get. Let's have a look at another example just to check you understand. 
I'm going to make this example even more complicated than you really need to be able to do on the exam. And yet you'll see it's actually still pretty easy. You'll see that almost all of our equation is missing. All I've got is the substance which we form, O2, oxygen gas. Normally on the exam, they wouldn't present the question in this way. They'd give you more information. But even lacking some of that information, we can still complete this. It's that easy. We're forming oxygen, and if we look at the data sheet, it's pretty clear that there is only one ion which we could be forming oxygen from, and that is the oxide ion. The data sheet tells us the formula of the oxide ion is O2 minus, so let's add that into our formula now. That gives us O2 minus becomes O2. Just to be clear, the O2 minus is a single ion with two negative charges. That's why the two is in a different place. The O2 is oxygen gas, that is two oxygen atoms which are stuck to each other. Or to put that another way, in terms of particles, we've got one oxide ion on the left and we've got two oxygen atoms stuck to each other on the right. So our first job is to balance out these particles. As you've probably already figured out, all you need to do is stick a two in front of the oxide ion. This gives us two oxide ions, which join together to give us an O2 molecule. Finally, we need to add in the electrons. If we look at those oxide ions, you can see that each oxide ion has two extra negative charges. So it's got two extra electrons. But we've also balanced our equation by saying that we've got two ions. So two ions, each with two electrons, gives us a total of four electrons altogether. And that's it. That was more complicated than you really need to be able to do, but I hope it was still fairly easy for you to follow. I'll leave a link to the data sheet in the description for this video. Finally, let's have a look at what happens if you've got a positive ion instead. In this case, I'm going to be dealing with the hydrogen ion, purely because this is probably the most complicated one which you'll have to deal with out of the positive ions. And that's because of what it forms. As you've probably already figured out, a hydrogen ion joins with another hydrogen ion to form hydrogen gas. And I'm sure you already know that hydrogen gas is H2. This is what makes hydrogen a bit more complicated than the rest of the options when we're looking at positively charged ions. Because if you're dealing with a metal, copper, magnesium, sodium, or any of the others, you're not going to have to worry about this. There won't be a number there. When we look at something like a copper atom, we just deal with one single copper atom. Now it's true that that copper atom is going to be uh, in a chunk of copper with millions and millions and millions of atoms, but when it comes to the maths, when you're dealing with any of the metals at all, you don't need to worry about this number. It's with hydrogen where you do have to have that. And that makes it a tiny, tiny bit more complicated. But again, I think you're going to see it's fairly easy. So again, first step, what we need to do is look at how many particles we've got on each side. Well, we've got two hydrogen atoms here. We've only got one hydrogen ion. So you probably already figured this out as well, but fairly obviously, if we've got two hydrogens here and only one hydrogen there, we're going to need to put a two just there to make sure that our numbers balance out. So now we've got two hydrogens on each side. Let's have a look at our charges now. Well, we've got a positive charge just here, and we've got two lots of positive charges. That means over on this side, we are lacking two electrons. Over on this side, everything's all sorted out, and that hydrogen, it's reached the cathode, it's gained electrons from the power supply, and it's become hydrogen atoms. So this is the only difference really when you're dealing with positively charged ions, that in this case, our electrons don't go on this side, they go on this side to balance out these positive charges. So let's add an electron for a start. There's the electron. But again, we've got a little bit of a problem because we've only got one negative charge here but we've got two hydrogen ions, both of which need an electron. And so again, all we need to do is put a two just there. So now we've got two electrons for each of these positive charges. And when those two electrons 
join onto each one of those positive charges, we're going to get hydrogen atoms, and those two hydrogen atoms stick to each other and form a molecule of hydrogen gas. Remember, all metals form positively charged ions, and when they go through the process of electrolysis, each individual ion just forms one individual metal atom. So you don't really need to worry about balancing the numbers of particles, that's already taken care of. All you need to worry about is balancing the number of charges, and with metals it's really easy. If it's a 2+, you're going to need 2 electrons to balance it out. If it's a 3+, you're going to need 3 electrons to balance it out. And as we've just seen, if it's a 1+, then you're just going to need 1 electron per ion to balance that out. I hope that's convinced you that this is an easier topic than it first looks, but if not, I suggest you download a copy of the datasheet and have a practice at a few of these. Run through the video again, pick a different ion to the one which I'm looking at on screen, and just run through the process and check that you understand what you're doing. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the snap quiz. The link is right here, and it'll also be in the description, along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.